when two people get together and they haven't healed their past, what typically happens from experience that you've seen over the last 10 years of couples you've met or stories you've heard? I mean, you just, you, so this is the thing that I, I find really often is like, whenever two people are in close proximity, whether they're in a relationship or not, an intimate relationship or not, they're, you literally have two egos. And these two egos, when they rub up against each other, sometimes there's going to be friction. Like egos are rough, right? It's almost like two rocks. You rub the right rocks (laughs) and there's going to be fire, Mm. right? So these egos, I think when we carry that past pain, they're dense, they're super rough. And when you do that healing work, you smooth out that roughness, you decrease that density that you're carrying so that you can have more self-awareness when points of friction happen because th- those are undeniable. You're not going to like heal yourself and then never more will you like have arguments or anything like that. That's unrealistic. But you can sort of maintain your inner harmony or try your best to while something difficult is happening. Yeah. I love that you kept using this word harmony because that's <clears throat> what I feel like I've been developing within me for the last few years mm. in my healing journey at this stage of healing. Because uh, I feel like healing is a journey and you're to keep healing forever. But this stage of healing, it's been the the word and the theme has always been harmony and developing oh, it within me. Yeah. And really not worrying what's happening around me. But yeah. as long as I create that within me, I'm going to have more peace in my external world. And when two people in relationship yeah. develop, cultivate harmony, cultivate a beautiful garden inside of them, as opposed to a, yeah. you know a, a desert or a rocky mountains yeah. inside of them, it's easier to navigate challenges in life. Can I ask you? So, what, what does like harmony feel like for you? Peace. 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 Nice. Like laying on a, a calm beach and just hearing waves mm-hmm. like gently con- grazing the sand. That's and so just good. Calm. I, you know, it's funny because I'm like I'm thinking to myself when I was listening to you talk like what do, how do I perceive harmony and it's clarity and peace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about this on page 154 of the way forward. When your self love increases, you become far less willing to harm others. Why? Because real self love slowly opens the door to unconditional love for all beings. And it sounds like the more I'm talking to you about this, it sounds like when we have hurt or sadness about something in our life, whether it's a recent hurt or sadness or past that keeps coming up, we don't know how to fully love ourselves for the pain, the shame, or the feelings we have towards that memory. Yeah. And so we have guilt, sadness, anger, yeah. resentment, a lack of forgiveness of others, of ourselves. And therefore we harm self and probably others more frequently when totally. we do that. Totally. But you said real again, when you when your self love increases, that's when you're more in harmony with yourself and less reactive to others is what it sounds like. Totally, totally. I really believe that. I think if you were literally to wonder like what is the missing piece? And we're talking about both words, like a piece in a puzzle and peace Ooh. in the earth. Like what's missing? It's self love. And I really genuinely believe and I've seen this process not only happen inside of me, but others and as that we're talking genuine self-love, like not commercial self-love, not like what are you buying yourself and all this stuff, not that. We're talking about how you engage with yourself in an accepting manner, right? The energy you put into your personal transformation, the the sort of the the willingness to engage with your own emotional history. That's what I really think is yes. genuine self-love. But once you're able to engage with yourself and activate those parts of self-love so that you can better know and heal yourself, then that sort of reactive pattern to lash out on others, to, you know, wish harm on others, all those things just decrease, they melt away. And even for people you don't like, you know, you're just like, oh, I wish them the best. Yeah, but I, mm-hmm. may they be over there, but I, I wish <laughs> yeah, them the yeah. best, you know? Exactly. And I think it's pretty across the board. I think yes. if as people really develop that quality and can just engage with their past better, I think they're, they're less likely to want to harm others. It's, it's so fascinating because there was definitely decades where I was extremely reactive mm-hmm. or combative or defensive or emotional, right? In certain moments, not all the time, but like when I was triggered, when the wound was triggered in me, I had this like, okay, I want to win. I want to be right. I want yeah. to defend. And I always felt like people just don't understand me. 
Yeah. People like don't get me. And I was like, why don't they understand me? Why I'm so angry or why I'm frustrated about these certain moments. Yeah. Now, after being on a healing journey, I can witness other people doing it and say, oh, wow, yeah, I remember that because that was me for a long time. Yeah, for sure. And have compassion for people, but also know that the only way I was able to have more calm and inner peace was doing the healing work. Yeah. That's the only way I was able to get there because I tried it from other ways, making money, being successful, having you know, attractive women around me, trying all the things that you think are going to bring you more peace. They didn't bring me peace. Yeah. Yeah. And it was until I did the inner work and I turned around and I faced the pain Yeah. as opposed, you know, the thing that was hunting me mm -hmm. and haunting me, I faced it and started to work with it Yeah. as opposed to run away from it. That's when over time it started to have more, you know, calming reactions. It's still not perfect, but it definitely improved over time. You know, you, your four life lessons in your book, you say the first one, build inner peace or fall to outer chaos. This is like the the missing piece yeah, yeah. in the world, but yeah. also the peace within you. Your life, number one life lesson of these four life lessons is build inner peace or fall to outer chaos. Second one you say is be flexible. Being flexible does not mean giving up. The third, appreciate the closest friends in your life. And the fourth, challenging times do not last forever. The only thing is, challenging times may last forever if you don't face them yeah yeah you know these painful memories will yeah. keep coming It'll up keep haunting you yeah unless you face them and find a way to build inner peace yeah right no it's really true and i think um it's interesting because you can look at it from different perspectives where challenging times you know ultimately everything that arises ultimately passes away so mm -hmm. something that may be difficult may disappear and then they may come back Right. Mm. So in that sense, it doesn't last forever. But in the other sense that you're talking about, it's totally true where there will be particular difficulties that you carry within you that will just keep popping up, popping up. They'll get triggered by a certain thing that your memory is like, oh, this again, danger, danger, danger. And then you feel the reaction again. Um, so these things have to be addressed. Yes. And I love that you're pointing out too. you know, the fall to falling to outer chaos, because yeah. that's something that I feel like I, you know, as people who care about personal transformation, people who really want to build peace within themselves, the challenge is, can you maintain your energy the way you want it to be? Because human beings, we are often in the system of like osmosis, where mm -hmm. if I have a particular emotion, whether it's anger or joy, right, whatever it may be, I'll usually want uh, will want another person to join us in that emotion. Right. Right. So even it's the like bad ones. Yeah, exactly. Even the bad ones. So like if I'm angry, I'm like, please, please join me in my anger. And right, either right. by making you angry or by being like, let me tell you a story about this thing that happened that pissed me off. Please join me in also this being jerk, angry. They yeah. did this. Yeah. Right. But the same thing with the lighter emotions, right? We want to partake in them. And those are beautiful. Like those happily, yeah, let me join you in your joy. Like let me be yes. I would love to be happy for you. But when someone is inviting you to join them in their anger, whether by pissing you off or by telling you what pissed them off so you can be angry with them, I think those moments are where the real sort of like, this is a test, right? This is like, I don't need to join you in this anger. Actually, I'm okay. Like, I don't want that heaviness. Yes. I could even practice, like, especially if it's a dear loved one, like, I could even practice listening to you and seeing you, but also just maintaining my peace while I'm trying to see you. And it's really difficult, right? It's, it's not like a, you know, get 100% type test, but you can do your best to just keep your energy as it is, especially as you're moving through different environments, you know, moving out of the work environment to, you know, different, different situations that you're in. Because I think being able to manage your own energy, I think it's just a sign of mastery. It is a huge sign of mastery. And when you are in reaction mode, something else has power over you. Oh yeah. Something else oh, is yeah. more powerful than you are. Yeah. And it's when I learned that it pissed me off because mm -hmm. I felt like I was always in control. Mm -hmm. But when I was reacting or defensive or guarded or frustrated, I realized later, I was like, man, I allowed that person, that, that moment, that thing to have power over me to get into right. a negative state. Yeah. That's not fulfilling. That's not fun. Yeah. And so I had to learn how to deconstruct that right. and, and have more mastery over my emotions. And it doesn't mean I'm perfect and I still get frustrated and I still have moments yeah. of, you know, anger. 
but I'm aware, I'm aware of it quicker and I'm like, yeah. you know, let's shift out of this. This isn't serving my vision. Yeah. It's not serving me. And you know, when you're in a group, in a situation like that, where maybe the whole group is getting upset by a particular situation, it, if, if one person is able to put their head above the water and they're like, oh, actually we're okay. You know, this is, this right. sucks, but we're going to be fine. Yeah. And then everyone kind of can, you know, gets, gets another opportunity to kind of wake up a little bit and they're like, oh yeah, we're good. Yeah. You know, we don't have to just roll in anger right now together because people don't quite get like, you can be skillful without creating all this immense tension in your mind. Like you can still assess the situation and be like, oh, this situation needs my attention. I need to solve it without producing so much stress in the process. Mm -hmm.